Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, exploring the issues affecting all of our lives. I'm your host, Austin Harris. It's been 20 years since the People's Progressive Movement entered the Cayman Islands political landscape. During that time, they've led three government administrations and enacted a number of policies that have benefited Cayman as a jurisdiction, its economy, and people. As we celebrate this milestone, we also take a look back to those early years and ask, what was the impetus or inspiration behind the movement, particularly at the grassroots level? And is it still relevant today? To help me answer those questions, it is our pleasure to welcome on today's episode one of the original members of the People's Progressive Movement, Mr. Chris White. Chris, I want to say thank you and welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you for having me, Austin. It's good to be here. It is a pleasure to have you in studios. And um, before we get into, I guess you could call it the meat of our usual interviews, we like to get to know our guest a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and as we say in Cayman, who you fa? Uh, my name is Christopher White. Um, I was born in Jamaica, but to Cayman parents, and I've lived here all my life. We came back when I was about six months, been here ever since. Um, I'm the grandson, as we call it, but I wasn't really. My mother's father died when she was 12, and the grandfather we knew was his brother, which was Dr. Roy. Okay. So that was like the grandfather we knew growing up. So he was like our grandfather, even though he's our grand uncle, mm -hmm. Uncle Roy. So um, that's who our uncle is yeah. and then i'm for derek and marguerite white all right well again uh, salt of the earth and definitely your roots as far as cayman is concerned run deep run very deep indeed and the one and only love i have where it comes to country is grand cayman the cayman islands are fantastic yeah. well let's move on now to i guess what brings us together and uh, earlier on in my introduction i um, alluded to the fact that you have been with the People's Progressive Movement from the start. When did you first become a member of the People's Progressive Movement? Well, I can't say exactly when I became a member because as soon as membership became available, I became a member. Uh -huh. But I remember with politics, my brother David and I, we go back to the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And definitely before the 1984 election, we were with support Linford Pearson. Yes. Always was a supporter of Linford Pearson and that was before the nineteen eighty four election we got involved in politics which was the in those days the taking people around to meetings and mm -hmm. so on. We were involved in that and we always supported him. Then along came the Honorable D. Kurt Tibbetts as well and he joined. Um, and we've supported him ever since he got involved. Eighty eight was the first time. So we were involved in politics and then I remember supporting um, Linford and Kurt, but in those days it wasn't a party system. And we heard rumors about um, when Kurt became the leader of something happening and there was going to be an overthrow and all like this, which very much upset us. Right. And then when it came to being, I remember then they were having this uh, meeting that they were going to vote Kurt out of um, out of leadership yeah. and we weren't happy about it at the time we didn't know really who the other side was going to be except for we heard who was leading this um, coup as they called it at the time yeah. and um, the day was happening there was going to be a protest and from that very first day when they overthrew Kurt and his government we were out there protesting against it we helped um, with the little groups that got organized together to do protests and so on. We met up at Lion Center, um, planned different protests about it. So that really was when we first got involved with the group that would eventually become um, PPM. All right. And um, I mean, I can't remember exactly the date. Membership became about, and um, you became members. But from the very beginning, from the very first day, when there was an opposition to the protest, I mean, to the government that was throwing Kurt out, we joined that group. 
Well, first of all, you mentioned the word coup, and I think it's important for the listening audience that this was a bloodless clue, coup. Uh, you a, know, friendly coup. a friendly coup. A friendly coup. You yeah. know, one day one government was in, the next day another government was in, uh, but uh, there was no blood on the streets, so to speak. Uh, but also when you say you, you were there from the beginning, I think um, that is safe to say that uh, you've been there. We're now celebrating 20 years uh, of the People's Progressive Movement. So give or take 20 years being a member in the organization. Um, you said the reason you joined the progressives was because of the coup? Is that well, correct? Or were there other reasons attached to why you chose the progressives as a, uh, as a political group, if you will, yeah. uh, to become a member of? Well, when this took place, um, we, we never, there wasn't a party, so we couldn't support a party. We supported individuals and we supported Kurt die hard, always supported Kurt. So when we heard that he was being overthrown, um, the friendly coup, we, um, we were not happy about it. So we went out to the protests and from there we got, and in fact, there was like, as you know, the six original, um, the ones who formed the PPM. Yeah. We heard little rumblings about that too, that there was a group that was, and we didn't know the names, but we obviously knew Kurt, mm -hmm. uh, Lynn, Miss Edna, and so on. They were together right. forming this so-called, uh, in a party or a grouping mm -hmm. at the time, we called it a movement, and they were getting together to get people. And very soon after that, we got an invitation because we were at all the events, all mm -hmm. the protests and so on, went out to the government house, we went out to the legislative assembly protesting mm -hmm. what we thought was a wrong thing for the Cayman Islands and they didn't portray us in a good light, you know, it was bad for our image right. and we didn't agree with it so we were in protest to it and when this group got together and were forming and they invited um, my memory of being an old man, I can't remember too good, but I think the first meeting we were invited to was one at the Mary Miller Hall, mm -hmm. and they just, and a lot of people turned up then, and they were talking about farming, and they gave suggestions for names and so on, and as typical with PPM and progressives, it was always the people that had to say. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, looking back on the past 20 years, what has your progressive experience um, been like? Um, is there any one aspect that you've enjoyed more than the other, or just in general, looking at, looking back at those twenty years, you know, would you do it all over again? Would do it all over again because what we found in the past before parties mm -hmm. was that we would have our say at election time. And after that, we didn't hear back anything really. You didn't have much input, much say until the next election. Mm -hmm. And um, you could voice your opinion and throw, I mean, up here, like show your disagreement with certain things. Yes. But it really didn't matter. When the progressives are formed, I don't know about other groupings, but when the progressives are formed from the very beginning, it was the people, the members that were, and especially the executive, which I've been a, proud member of the executive from the very first executive and I'm still a member of the executive mm. and we have as much say which sounds funny but we have as much say as when Kurt was the leader or Alan as leader we have just as much say as them they have their opinions yes. they will say what they believe in but they will listen to everybody around the table and we have our input and the majority rules and I can tell you there have been times when Kurt was the leader and he had his opinion, but the majority was slightly against what he was suggesting, tweaking it a little. Mm -hmm. Same with Alan. When Alan was a leader, Alan would have his say, but he would listen to everybody, and it's what the majority um, wanted that would come forward. And the other thing I love about the progressives is that um, when, they, when they go into meeting the legislative assembly at the time of parliament, mm -hmm. they always made sure that first of all, not only the elected members knew what they were going to talk about or debate, but the executive knew, and then generally it's fallen down a little bit in recent times for whatever reason, mm. COVID and so on, but they always let the membership know, and the membership would have an input, and even if not change anything, 
at least they knew what was going to be discussed, and that is so much different to before party, party politics. Indeed. Um, over the years, uh, have you, um, you know, embraced any one or two progressive representatives, those who have been elected uh, as perhaps uh, among your favorites? Very difficult question. Yes. But I'll tell you, once you're progressives, I love you. I'm loyal to progressives, and mm -hmm. I love all progressives, elected members, or MPs as they are now. But before um, progressives, obviously, Kurt and Alden, we always supported them. And they've come in, they formed the PPM, and so therefore we have been close with them probably more than the other progressives. So we, we've always supported Kurt and always supported Alden, and we're very close with them and do whatever they want once it's for the betterment of the country. Mm -hmm. But once, it, as I say, once it's a progressive elected member, I love them all because I'm loyal to the PPM, you know, and if I have something that they've done and I don't agree, I will point it out and they'll explain. And I know there have been times that I've sat down at a table and I have agreed with, disagreed with a couple things, and I know that everybody will have their say, but I know on two occasions I can tell you with truthfulness something I agreed with concerning um, committees, and I voiced my opinion, and everybody had their say. And afterwards, the, the leader at the time was Honorable D. Tibbetts. At the end of the meeting, he took me aside and explained why and the continuity and so on. Sure. But he explained he didn't have to do that. And the same thing with Alan McLaughlin when he was leader and even premier and you say something, he will explain to you. He may not say it in front of everybody, yeah. but if you don't agree with something, he'll either tell you then or call you and let you know. And that's why I love the, I don't know if the others are so, but I love the progressives for that. We're a family. In your own words, you have been acquainted with the Cayman political landscape since the 80s. Um, would you say that the party system and or in particular the progressives movement have improved politics in the Cayman Islands and if so, why? Well, I can say that most definitely yes. And the main thing about party politics is that in the past, we would support a politician or two politicians, three politicians, and hope they would get in. And if they get in, then they would have to try align themselves with people, some that we may not even support, but they would have to try form a government with others. Whereas now with the progressives um, or any party, when you vote for your party, you know, who's go you know who the premier is going to be or the leader mm -hmm. and who we propose the, le the premier to be. We know who our proposed ministers are. We know who our elected members are. We know who our government is going to be yeah. if we win and if that's who we support. In the past, we didn't know that and we had to wait a week or two for the horse, horse trading and so on, which sometimes happens now too. Mm -hmm. But yes. If we win, we know who our government is going to be, which is so different to how it used to be in the past. All right. Again, looking back over your last 20 years, being involved with the progressives, an executive member from the beginning, uh, an original grassroots member from the beginning, what are some of the more notable or memorable achievements of the People's Progressive Movement um, as one of the three governments that they've led? Well, they've been a lot, so I can't go over all, but I would say the two that sticks out most and most notable to me is um, the modernization, or whatever the correct word is, for the um, a, new, a new, more modern constitution. Yes. And that was done under the progressive, with the PPM government, yes. and it was Kurt again and Alden, and they obviously joined with some of the other side too, to um, to go over it, but that was led by the PPM government and it was a PPM government pushing it as far as I remember to get a more modern constitution. And then um, the other thing, in fact, I think it was done under Kurt Tibbetts when he was a leader, mm -hmm. the freedom of information that is very, very important. Yeah. And I think it was done under him, but it's continued. And it was our government that pushed that. And as I say, that's a very important 
And so I was glad that there were two things that really stick out. Absolutely. That we yeah. have done, we well, achieved. Uh, two very important policies, a constitution defining uh, what a country is and its ambitions, and certainly the freedom of information, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, no one government you know, can uh, certainly have all of the say, and certainly the people mm -hmm. are in fact the power behind uh, true democracies, and the right to know is certainly, again, something that benefits uh, the whole. Um, would you like to see a progressive-led government in place today? And if so, why? Yes, I would like to see a progressive-led government now, because as history, as I've seen in history, we are uh, we know what we're getting. They work well together. Um, as we see as it is now where there are individuals, new faces, and they, we're not getting cohesiveness. And you just take COVID for an example. We were a progressive-led government at the time, but throughout COVID, they worked together. Um, they saw through COVID, led by the Honorable Alan McLaughlin, and um, the country felt much safer with a progressive-led government and how they dealt with the situation as opposed to what we're seeing now. Uh, my final question, uh, Chris, might seem a little redundant. I think um, our listeners can probably guess what your answer is going to be, but I'm going to ask it anyway, against the backdrop of this, our 20th anniversary of the People's Progressive Movement. Is it your intention to remain uh, both a member of the PPM and also a member of the executive committee if um, obviously voted um, to continue in that role? Well, one I know and one I don't know. <laughs> I will always be progressive member, a progressive member, supporter of the progressives, because as far as I'm concerned, what progressives stand for, I, I, we may not agree with 100% of, you know, you never do in a group, but I support their um, aims and their ideas and so on. So I'll always be a progressive member. But as for the executive, that's the membership for you. So I would like to remain an executive member and proud to have been for 20 years. But when we have our conference, it's for the people to vote. And I will see what they decide. All right. <laughs> well, Chris White, I want to thank you for uh, being our guest uh, today on Let's Talk as we uh, recognize and celebrate the 20th anniversary of the People's Progressive Movement. Uh, any closing comments? Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure being here with you and talking with you and answering these questions. And I am very happy that we are celebrating 20 years of progressives. All right. Well, again, thank you so very much for being our guest and to our audiences. We again Say thank you for taking the time to tune in, and we hope you've enjoyed today's episode as much as we have. If you did, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please feel free to leave any comments you may have there as well. Please tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. for another episode of Let's Talk, exploring the issues affecting all of our lives. I'm your host, Austin Harris. Until next time.